Hey guys, today I wanted to do a video on tagging Revit MEP parts. In this case, I'm doing ductwork. So I have a tool that I found online called VDC Revit. Um, a guy named Steven developed it. I'll put a link down below. Uh, so you can see right here, I'm just tagging the ductwork with a basic pill shape. This is the family that I made. It's very simple. Basically, that family is looking at the item number property of the uh, fabrication ductwork, and you can see here it's very easy to make. I just did a, a pill shaped because that's what we like to use. So as you can see over here, that information is coming from the item number property. Now you can use other tools like Dynamo, which I've done. Um, we've also had to manually do it in the past. There's a couple other tools you can purchase. Siskiyou has a numbering tool. Um, typically you don't need an entire tool like Siski that does a whole bunch of other stuff sometimes you just want something that all it does is tag Evolve did have one of those but I think they discontinued it so one of the biggest things about this tool is is that you can number everything in hues duplicate item numbers. For example here I have a bunch of full joint straights that are the exact same piece and I want those to be the same piece number because they are identical. And over here I'm using his tool that he made. I really haven't had to edit many things here, I just kind of used it as is. And as you can see, I, I just clicked it and it worked. It kept all those full joints with the same piece number, which is what I want. I don't want unique numbers for every single piece of ductwork. I like to have duplicates because it's easier for the, for the shop. And you'll notice that the short joint right there with item number two was correctly numbered differently. Even though it's the same size, the length is different, therefore it's a different piece. So that was also important. Other tools we had hues would have issues with marking duplicates with the same piece number when they weren't true duplicates. So that can lead to a lot of confusion in the shop. As you can see here, it automatically starts where I want it to start. So if I want to start counting at 34, it does the same thing. What's cool is, is that the tool will also look at your last number used and count up for there. Now here I'm just placing more item number um, families. So there's also a tool called Keep Existing Numbers. So if I want to continue with that one, that's what that checkbox does. So as you can see, it, it, it looks, if any of your pieces have an item number, it looks for that and then continuously uses that number. You also have the exclusive option, which is if you want you truly unique numbers.
And you can see here I'm just doing some random tagging. The tool is very fast, very easy to use. It's free. He also has a items properties palette. Now what this lets you do is kind of see more stuff that Revit typically doesn't let you see. And it also lets you edit things much faster instead of using the edit part option. So as you can see, you can see your cut type typically can't see that in Revit. What he's doing is he's accessing this information through the Revit API. Uh, you can change your services, you can change your specifications. I use a lot for changing connectors. If I want to do a change of a bunch of different connectors at once, that's very useful. Okay guys, so that was just a quick tutorial of using this product called VDC Revit. I believe the developer's name is Steven, I'll put a link down below. Thanks.